Hello, I'm Khaled Ashour. I'm here today to talk to you about a, a speaking skill. Speaking, actually we are talking about compare and contrast. Compare and contrast is very important in our life. All our, our daily life routines and our daily situations are mainly based on compare and contrast. Let's see what's the purpose. The purpose of compare and contrast is either to show the similarities between two things and or to show the differences between these two things. Why we should do this? It's either to inform, to explain, to analyze or to evaluate. I want you when you compare and contrast to think of them this way. When we are holding comparisons, we are showing similarities between these two things. And where we are contrasting, we are showing or focusing on the differences between these two things. Here, these are some useful terms to describe similarities. Both A and B. A and B both, like A, B, neither A nor B. Let's see these in examples. Both cars and bicycles are forms of transport. They both have wheels, tires and brakes. Like cars, bicycles have gears, neither the former nor the latter can fly or float on the water. They are normally used to get from one place to another by road. Cars and bicycles are both popular ways of traveling. Now, we turn to the differences. How to show the difference between two things we are contrasting now. We can use expressions like these. On the other hand, or, however, these two examples show you how exactly you are going to use them in context. On the other hand, there are several differences between them. However, there are several differences between the two. Look at these two pictures. They are showing the two things we are comparing and contrasting now. We can use comparatives to talk about differences. Cars are faster than bicycles and are more expensive. Bicycles are not as big as cars and do not carry passengers. Cars are also heavier. Now, we can use also these words to show differences. While, whereas, and whilest. Let's see them in use. Cars need fuel to run, while bicycles do not. A car can drive from Abu Dhabi to Dubai in a short time, whereas it would take hours to complete the journey by bike. A bike is ridden while a car is driven. Some other helpful trans transitions or expressions that can express compare and contrast are Also, as, in the same way, like, likewise, similarly, comparable, equally, in addition, these ones to the left are used to compare. It means to show the similarities between two things. Here, the ones I'm going to show now to the right are going to contrast. It means 
your, your main focus is on the differences. The words are although, but, even though, however, on the other hand, otherwise, yet, still, as opposed to, different from, and whereas. Task number one. We're talking about helpful ways to compare and contrast now. One way to make it easy for you to compare and contrast is to draw a chart. A chart can compare two or more things together. To the left, you can see the picture of a camel. It means you are comparing and contrasting a camel to the second picture, the peacock. What are the categories? What are the elements we are going to use to compare them? You can put there, up, in the heading. We are going to compare them according to size, to the food they eat, or to their habitat. Here, if we talk about the size, you are going to say that a camel is larger in size compared to the peacock. The food. You can show differences or similarities here. The food for both of them are herbs, grass, or grains. The habitat. Both animals live in the Middle East and they are widely used, but the other one is mainly in the jungle. If you are asked to compare between a living room and a bedroom, you can easily show the similarities and the differences using something called a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram like this one. See how can we make a Venn diagram. In the following Venn diagram, we are going to show the similarities and the differences between a living room and the bedroom. We can draw one circle first and another circle that interacts in the middle. This part in the middle, which is interacting between the two circles, is used for showing the similarities. You are right. These two separate parts to the left and right are used to show the differences between the two things. You should put the name of one thing to the left, like living room. And the other thing to the, to the right, which is the bedroom. In a living room, you can find a sofa, but you cannot find a sofa in a bedroom. In a bedroom, you can find a bed, but you cannot find something else. These are two similarities, two things that can be found in both rooms. In both rooms, you will have curtains. You can have carpets. You can add to this list of similarities and differences between the two as long as you can. Task 3. The following T-chart is about life in a village and life in a city. If you are going to compare them, we can draw something like this. This is called a T-chart. On a T-chart, you can put one thing to the left and one thing to the right. In this case, we are comparing a village to a city. In a village, a village is quiet, but the city is busy. You can add more and more to them as, as far as you can. Here, you can also show similarities and differences through listing and matching. To list is to mention as many things as you can for the item you are talking about. So here if we give a list about an orange and an apple, we can put it like this. An apple is green, round, sweet, hard, have seeds, soft. 
An orange is a bit rough, full of seeds, sour, juicy, round, and yellow. You can mention as many qualities as mention. You can mention as many things as you can about both here and there. And you can now link or match the similarities like this. An apple grows on trees. An orange grows also on trees. So we can say both apples and oranges grow on trees. One more thing is round. They both are round. So both apples and oranges are round. These are similarities. We are showing similarities now. Both of them have seeds. So both of them have seeds. What about the other things? These are differences. An apple is green. And an orange is yellow. So these you can, you can use to talk about the differences, to contrast them and show the differences between them. An apple is green, but an orange is yellow. We are contrasting them now. An apple is sweet, whereas the orange is sour. An apple is hard. Whilest, an orange is juicy. As you could easily see now, that you can, by listing, reach two things. A lot of words that can go together for the two things, and these words we can use to show the similarities. Like these ones with the red arrows. Also, you can use the other words but this time to show the differences. So listing and matching can easily show you how to use or how to locate the differences and the similarities between two things. Let's have a look at this picture. This is a student. This student is behaving two in two different ways between months of summer and months of winter because this student doesn't like studying he behaves this way so in summer he's always active he's always active he's playing soccer he's playing basketball he's playing baseball he's swimming he's doing everything enjoying everything but here this is after school in September this student, as I told you, is lazy. He wants also to eat, to snack, and watch TV. So here and here, we can find a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. First, he's the same person. He's living in the same environment. But here, he's enjoying his summer holiday. He doesn't have the urge. He doesn't like to eat, and he never thinks of eating. But, on the other hand, this boy likes to watch TV a lot in winter, in September, during study time. So here and here, you can find a lot of similarities and differences, as I said. Let's have a look here. After school in October and after school in November, it's the same. The student is enjoying in summer, but he's lazy in winter. The student is very active in summer, whereas he is lazy. He likes to huh, use his computer, he likes to watch TV, and he likes to snack and eat cookies. Here after school in December, he is the same. Still in the school, as I told you, because he's lazy. So you can do the same for everything. You can categorize this on the three diagrams, three charts we learned before. Either to draw a chart and say a student in summer, a student in winter. Another thing, you can use the Venn diagram, showing the similarities between students' life in summer and students' life in winter. And also you can use the listing and matching. 
and by the end you will reach a lot of similarities and differences between the two. One other way to find the similarities and differences between things is to find pictures and these pictures are available on the internet. You can find lots of them. Get them and try to find the differences between the two pictures. Normally these pictures have between 7 and 10 mistakes or 10 differences between them. When you try to find the differences between them, what's left is the similarities. So mainly these two pictures are quite similar, but they have some differences. Try to find them and then it will be easy for you to talk about these two pictures. For example, if I try to find similarities between two, these two pictures, I can say like that. All the family members are there in both pictures. Like picture A, picture number 2 or picture B has a curtain. It's clear there. Neither picture number 1 nor picture number 2 is taken during the night because it's clear it's daytime there. If you try to find differences and you want to express your contrast or showing the difference between these two pictures, you can use any of the sentences like these. There is a book on the chair in picture number one, but the book is missing in picture number two. In picture number one, there is a picture to the left of the curtain, but this picture is missing in picture number two. The boy's trousers in picture number one have a pocket on them, while in picture number two, this pocket is missing. So these are some examples of showing similarities and differences in the same picture. Good. Let's wrap up now and say, as you could easily see from this lesson, that we have so many ways to express our, to express similarities or to show similarities between pictures and also to show differences. We can use all the strategies we learned today and we can use all these techniques like the chart table, the Venn diagram, the T-chart and listing and matching to find a lot of similarities and a lot of differences between them. If you use these so often, you will be accustomed to using them. You, you, it will be very easy for you to find the differences and similarities and you can speak fluently without hesitation in everyday life situations. Okay, these things enable you to speak well. They also enable you to write well. It's quite easy to compare and contrast using these techniques. Okay, this brings us to the end of our speaking lesson for today. I wish you all the best of luck in, our, in your studies. Thank you.